Hi everybody, it's time again for noise cancelling. I'm here with friends. It's me, Gareth Beavis, editor in chief of Tech Radar, and I am with. I'm so proud of you! Oh my god, made a little ditty. I'm Sherelle Smith, editor in chief of Laptop Mag, and I am Daryl Baxter, the software and downloads writer at Tech Radar. I'm James Peckham, phones editor for Tech Radar. And once again, I'm Gareth Beavis, Global Editor-in-Chief of Tech Radar, where for some reason, I don't know why, the last five podcasts, I've decided to start introducing myself first, even though the running order very clearly has always said I go last, but I'm just going for a double dip. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good, Cherie? You feeling good? I'm feeling pretty great. I'm going outside to a Lenovo event later on. I am excitement. You are excited. Well done. Uh, is it a big event? Is it outside the event itself? In a field? Uh, no, it's in a hotel. Like we're going back, we're going back to business with briefings. Genuinely, like all these feelings came flooding back. I'm like, oh, they get like cold diet cokes and stuff. Like <laughs> you don't have to have ordered them from the shop from like a week before. It's brilliant. Uh, Pexy, how you doing? I'm good. I, I ha- yeah, I had my vaccine uh, about an hour ago. So if I if I start getting really yeah! like really drowsy, vaccinations and violence 2021. I'm just going to keep an eye to make sure nothing in the background starts magnetizing towards you because that is a possibility. <laughs> yeah, hopefully my connection in this should be perfect because I've got 5G now, so it should be. Yeah, really I mean, you are 5G. Depends what Bill Gates thinks. Um, Daryl, welcome to the podcast. Nice to have you. Thanks for inviting me. Good to be here. I mean, your audio and visual setup is just insane. Like the quality of your webcam, like the audio levels. You know, you know what you're doing. I'm prepared. I'm here. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Have you downloaded the right software? Lol. <laughs> Absolute, absolute banter. Brilliant. Uh, Right, let's go for the big question. A couple of weeks ago, the iPhone 13 was rumoured to be coming in a hot pink. And uh, it's fair to say, James, that the internet got excited, right? That people wanted this. Yeah, people really wanted it. I I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, yeah. It uh, won't happen. uh, Yeah, it won't happen, especially because the leak was uh, suggesting it'd be the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And that phone is never going to come in pink. Those phones come in silver black or grey and that's your only choices you will not get a premium phone in hot pink but yeah um maybe one day it happened also this week we've seen an orange rumor as well well just rumors about orange or just an iphone being in orange an iphone being in orange uh, iphone 13 and burnt orange uh yeah i mean apple doesn't do pink like proper pink it does like subtle versions of it rose golds and things it doesn't there's no there's never an official pink i never think there will be but the the bigger question here is if you could reimagine any gadget in the worst possible color going what would it be and i can see sheree thinking on the spot so i'm going to start with james i don't mean to lower the tone already but it's a it's a brown iphone you don't want a brown iphone i disagree with that like uh, oh hot takes <laughs> done right with the right shading that could take off like chocolate diamonds did uh, a couple of years ago was that a thing oh yeah yeah it's a thing uh and, I, I did realize that. Pe- yeah and people were all about it oh my god chocolate diamonds oh my god and like because typically um brown diamonds they're used uh for industrial work and then someone was like i can make money off of this and they were like it, like let me let me spin this the right way and yeah it was a thing for a hot second so it with the right shading of brown like just the way that they do a sh- that subtle pink if you could do a subtle brown and like maybe do it call it a burnt sienna or something sexy i think they could spin that yeah, but not shit brown. Not, yeah. not shit brown. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, Daryl, what do you think? Oh, so after much deliberation, I think fluorescent green on an iPhone. You know, just the, the kind of colour that you wear when you're biking down the street and you just have that instead. I mean, why needs like Find My when you can have a fluorescent green iPhone? Oh, it doesn't all have to be an iPhone. I mean, so that begs the question, I agree, an iPhone would not fly in <laughs> fluorescent green, but would it work? Or would it? Actually, I say that. I feel like, you know, hot neon, that kind of stuff it is really popular. It's a shame that it would never happen. But I think that I think people would go for a, a fluorescent green iPhone. A glow in the dark? It, I, could see it, I could see it selling for the youth. As, <laughs> as, a, as, as a man of thinning hair, I'm allowed to say that now because it's game over for me nearly. <laughs> the, th- the thinning hair is really upsetting me. It's a whole separate issue in my life. But um, I've been dealing with it for the last six months. And I'm going to keep raising it to hope that everyone will give me sympathy. Uh, Cherie, what about you? Uh, I thought chartreuse, but um, I'm going to go with something even more offensive, puce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just the, sa- just, just the, just the name of it, puce. It's just like, mm, no one wants that. Um, 
I, I like even though it is theoretically a dark red or a purple brownish color like just the like yes we're going to come out with a puce phone it's right up there with saying moist like some people will be recoiled some people will be like oddly into it but I don't think uh, like I don't think <laughs> <laughs> I don't think puce would be a, a color that will make its way onto an iPhone anytime soon where do you stand on the word sponge I, I don't have, I, like, what I think sponge, I think cleaning or cake. So I have no problem with that. Yeah, but if, if you say moist, I think of cake. So that to me is a great thing. Mm, it, but, like, there's a way that some people say it, particularly, like, creepy old men, and they're like, moist. And you're like, <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Did not expect remember. to come on this podcast and hear that, but here we yeah, are. Yeah, <laughs> you're, not, you're not a lady who used to bartend. You, <laughs> uh, you haven't asked him. He could have been. <laughs> my hidden past um i i have really struggled with this question for the very same reason that daryl just said with a fluorescent green iphone because I, I was thinking more widely like what gadget wouldn't fit and i was like there is actually no color out there that somebody wouldn't enjoy because i was thinking right okay so the same way you said puce like what a beige computer and i was thinking well it's kind of retro you know it goes back to the mm. days of like early computing and people would enjoy that retro flavor and i was like right okay we'll flip it around and think like as pexy said with the pro max you know there's there's these devices that are designed like the ibm thinkpads that are very much for business and then you think well what if they did that in like a jazzy like broken rainbow color and no, no one's going to buy that and i thought well then everyone would say like, oh well done for reinventing these uh reinventing these devices and suddenly you realize there's just no way to do a wrong color people always find a kind of a powerful well done for trying something different idea and even i said we, we've managed to make brown work so i don't think anything else can can defy that so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to abstain because there isn't a good one <laughs> i think someone would love any color Basically, the way that everyone enjoyed the hot pink iPhone, I think someone would enjoy any color of anything ever. I can't think of anything that wouldn't be seen as alternative or clever or fun if you did it ex differently. Cool. Everyone's agreement because they didn't say anything. Yeah. Well done, mm. me. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I have to give it to Sharif for the word puce. Simple as that. <laughs> Points to you. Puce. Puce. Ew. No. Um, <laughs> so let's go on to the Gadget Hall of Fame for the new listeners. What is the Gadget Hall of Fame? It's a very big hanger that lives in our minds, and we can all imagine it when we close to go to sleep. Uh, imagine the, where the Ark of the Covenant is stored, but with you know when that when that warehouse facility was first created, and they're like, "What are we going to put in it?" I don't know. We've got a amulet. We put it over there in R15 and see if we fill it up with other stuff later. We're very much in the early stages of this of this thing. You know, there's some good stuff. There's uh, wherever you brought Pexy Barco Battler thing, whatever that was called. Henry's <laughs> Trainers yeah. with the uh, stopwatch on. There's a, and then over in another corner, there's the skip, the big bin where Swider's headphones and a jawbone up are currently broken at the bottom of. Uh, so, Daryl, what are you bringing in and where is it going to go? Well, I'm going to bring to this museum the famous, the very very underrated the palm pre which is just my favorite all-time <gasps> oh my god that ever. was my favorite of my palms oh my god i'm so happy you have it For the listener he has one yeah i've got one too get it out gareth i've got it with me but well that, I, don't, <laughs> I don't carry it around surprisingly um quick key question this, and we have done this can have you ever tried to cut cheese with that thing and not, <laughs> not, the, not the american version of that phrase but uh <gasps> i've not had any um you know um outings or friends events right now but surely when everyone gets gets together i'll make sure to have this showcase for cheese definitely because the keyboard is incredibly sharp on that thing and you can you can slice the block of cheddar with it you can i i don't remember i don't remember it being sharp it is sharp huh the keyboard on the side on the side of the keyboard no no not the keys on the edge of the keyboard <laughs> like round the edge of the frame it's a very uh, sharp edge I don't remember that. I just have fond memories of that phone. It was my last uh, Palm phone before I actually switched over to Android. Uh, but I, I, I'd like to see someone try to um, cut some charcuterie with it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to find some. I, I, can I do it for a video series? What can I cut yeah. it with? I mean, Pexy, you're the phone's editor. What are, you, what are your thoughts on the Palm Pre? Uh, I've never used one. Of course. Well, it, it, most... it slightly before your time, of course. But I mean, Yeah, it was slightly before my time. Do you know the legend of it, though? Not really. I just purely every time we talk about it, you would talk about how it can cut cheese, and that's all I know about it because <laughs> it, it can. <laughs> um, but it's it was oh, it was so good. I remember I was it was my first CES. I was probably Cherie's fifteenth or something because she'd been going there since she was like preschool because she was like oh, I'm into this. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and I remember being let's let's say tired. Um, 
for, for reasons um, and went to the Palm press conference thinking it wasn't going to be much because, you know, this was the days where leaks weren't really even the thing. So and they, they launched the Palm Prix and I nearly wept because it, it, see, there's going to be an incredible amount of work needing to be done. And I, <laughs> I wasn't in the frame of mind to do so much at that point. Um, but it, it's, just, it's such a shame if it didn't take off because it, mm. it had an interface that was better than the iPhone. Like yeah. genuinely it had, you know, what everyone uses now, it had cards to jump between apps. It had like a really rich, sort of lovely gestures. It had the keyboard. It was just in many ways almost perfect. So um, yeah. Just that's a shame it didn't it didn't take off and they had they tried to do it afterwards with different versions but it just didn't work did it it didn't work in the UK O2 the who was the uh, main operator for bringing the iPhone to the to the country also took the Palm Prix so that shows the importance of it I, I did sell it at O2 back in the day um, so I was the one who would showcase it and go what do you want an iPhone 3G or a Palm Prix I was like well, well Palm Prix you can multitask on the Palm Prix you can go switch between apps and you can cut cheese as well. It's, it's working. You're, yeah. a good sales, you're a good salesman, Daryl. <laughs> and even I like, had the magnetic dock as well, so it would ah, actually charge it. Yeah. This is, this is way before its time. Like the, reader, the listeners can't see this, but this, that magnetic dock where it could just charge itself by just sitting on the back. Genius. Uh, well, I mean, not just in the Hall of Fame. To me, it's going to have that kind of plinth in the middle with the big spotlight on it. I'll approve of that. We'll have to apl- employ somebody to come and just bring you know fresh cheese every week so if anyone wants to come and have a go at slicing cheddar they can every do hour on the hour different cheeses yeah, yeah exactly you know just because in case no one turns up and wants to have a go that's the it's the important thing to have that uh great all right well we've we've had some good stuff from you daryl well done um and we've sp- spoken a lot about apple tangentially and otherwise um and this week it is all about apple um we just mo- mentioned about the first iphone let's let's go to that I keep getting served the the first iPhone launch on YouTube for some reason as a kind of like a suggested video. So I've watched it quite a lot. It's one of those ones where watching it back with hindsight, you realize just how seismic it was. But I, I mean, I'm assuming, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners have understood that the the first demo was so far ahead of when the iPhone was ready to work that Steve Jobs had to do. I think I read that he had to do it in exact order of of like opening apps and shutting things down. Otherwise, the whole thing would have crashed. Live demo on the on the air just amazing like sheree did you cover that or were you in the industry for that at that point or were you doing something i was not in the industry for that yet and i was uh, like i was at that point fully ingratiated into android and there was no way you were going to get me off to like if you couldn't get me on a blackberry you weren't going to get me on an iphone but so what was your thoughts about it when it happened ah it was a phone (laughs) like i was i was very much beside it with my paul preens and my android so there wasn't anything for me there and it was just ridiculously expensive so it's just like yeah no this is not going to be a possibility for me uh just uh, i was freelancing like it yeah no and, and the funny thing is like one of the, way, the ways that it was demoed on the day was he steve jobs phoned starbucks and ordered four thousand lattes and everyone was like oh you're so funny it's brilliant um and it's it's funny because you think that like how is that a demo but you have to remember this was the days when the iPhone, so the iPod was was reigning supreme. It had, it, it just it had a touch touch wheel, and then suddenly Apple's done like kind of an iPod that could make a phone call, and that's why this was the big thing. And it was, I know I'm going over ground that so many people know about already, but it's it still, to this day, remains one of those things that it was it was absolutely iconic. And even if you don't agree with the fact the iPhone is the greatest phone of all time, which you know absolutely understand that there was something massive that happened that day and the fact we're still talking about apple now is largely to do with with those moments but um didn't always go so well did it i think it was the iphone the 4s which had the antenna problem oh the four ah you were holding it wrong you had to levitate it to use it correctly if you touched (laughs) if you if your filthy unwashed hands came anywhere in contact with the visage of the phone it would not work correctly it was all your fault yeah i mean if anyone doesn't remember this this is where uh this is the thing i it's because of the iphone you know live by the sword die by the sword it's such a big marketing campaign it was like the phone the iphone 4 especially you know it was leaked so comprehensively for the first time and was the first you know industrial looking beautiful phone from apple i'd say they made such a big deal about it and then for there to be a slight issue that sort of like transcended tech enthusiasts to people that just generally liked wanting wanted an iphone like, oh there's a problem with the iphone is there 
I'm not sure that there wasn't a similar problem with other phones out there where you could block block antennas by putting your hand on the wrong place. But nobody got that that kind of you know that backlash because nobody had that that level of critical acclaim that Apple had garnered. You're holding it wrong. The ultimate that's what she said joke. <laughs> um, so I mean, how did he? T- I mean, again, how did you take that, Daryl? What did you think about the holding it wrong? Did it make sense to you? Did you think it was fair? You weren't selling these this time, were you? You weren't selling them anymore, were you? I was, yeah. Oh. It, yeah, I was. So it was very odd because I remember that it was also the, the iPhone 4 that got leaked like a few months before its launch as well. People didn't know what it was going to be called. Yeah. And everyone was waiting for the big redesign. And I rem- even remember like 11 years ago of people wondering what it's going to be, what it's going to be called. And then, yeah, it launched at WWDC, uh, which feels strange actually um, now. And yeah, when it launched a couple of weeks after, we were already getting a few queries about, oh, can I return the phone? What's happening? And then obviously once the event came and Steve Jobs was, you could tell he was irritated because he was like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to say this, but we're bringing out free bumpers. And then it was just manic. The store was full of queries about how do I get my free bumper? How do I install this app? Because you had to install an app from Apple to request a free case. And it was just <laughs> mad, even 11 years on, mad. But even though from that, the silver lining is I want the bumper to come back because that design yeah. now is back into the iPhone 12 and I want that to come back to the 13. And also the holding it wrong thing, the, I think most people might forget that one of the things was someone emailed Steve Jobs. If I re- I'm right in this, didn't someone email Steve Jobs and yeah. they said like, oh, there's a, there's a problem with my iPhone. What can I do about this? And he just replied back saying, just don't, ho- just avoid holding it that way. As a really flippant remark that obviously started a whole big thing. <laughs> but, then, I remember, but then eventually when Apple gave a statement, I remember this one, they, 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 they said like, we were, we were stunned. What they said when they found out that they were um, looking to, when we investigated it how we calculate the bars of signal strength to display it was totally wrong we we're mistakenly displaying two more bars than should have been given for signal strength even though it's absolutely fine don't worry about it it's absolutely fine don't look at it it's absolutely fine have a free bumper bye-bye you know it was very strange um but equally one of the one of the best iphones i think ever made despite that issue you know if you did if you did hold it in the right way absolutely okay um the ipad who 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 also thought that was the stupidest name possible and now don't even hear it anymore yeah, it's 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 become that like iconic name, hasn't it? That you don't, you do, yeah. As you say, you don't even hear it. It's just now, it now is a word part of our vocabulary. But I remember, remember the first time hearing about that. Even the concept at the time seemed silly to me, and and the name especially was just like that is that is odd. But yeah, now it's now it's something I write on a daily basis. And what eleven years later, it's uh, it's now just part of daily life. And Cherie, would you prefer to hear the to use the isolate? I mean, you don't like using tablets, but would you have used the isolate? Sheree doesn't believe in tablets is the is the thing. Ah, exactly, yeah. They don't exist, according to Sheree. I mean, back then when the first ones came out, I like I was all bored I was team tablet and then um phablets, large phones came out and I'm like, Well, there's no need for tablets anymore and that's when I stopped believing in them. That's when they stopped existing. <laughs> for, for someone that works with laptops so comprehensively, the, the the importance of a large screen is massive. Just massive. Yeah, but like once I can start carrying it, around, like there's a difference between me taking my phone and taking a picture and then watching someone with a 10 inch tablet do the same thing outdoors. Oh, it, yeah. it it raises my ire. It makes me want to slap the thing out of their hands. Like I, I, I just can't take it. No, I don't want it. Yeah. I, yeah. People that t- t- take pictures of a tablet. No, 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 no. Not interested. Can't handle it either. Um, But I mean, would the isolate have worked better for you as a name? Would you have felt like that was more applicable, more relevant, more luscious? I don't know. Everyone's giving me blank looks right now, so I'm trying, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to garner some kind of response. No, <laughs> just no. <laughs> and, and I think you said, Daryl, when we were discussing this in the build-up, the, it's easy to forget that the first iPad was really badly designed, I'd say. It was, it was very plastic, very sort of... If it didn't, it did, it's nowhere near the, the iPad Pros the, that we have these days, right? No, that's it. I mean, it had a thick bezel. Um, it was really regarded as a big iPod Touch, I remember, um, with 3G tacked on if you wanted it. Um, couldn't multitask, had that portrait keyboard, you know, with the acrylic and the dock. Um, yeah, madness. And yeah, multitasking didn't really appear until well, maybe five, six months after its launch. So it really was like a one app at, at a time tablet. And that was yeah. it. And, but then Apple did the same thing of marketing-wise. I remember there was an episode of Modern Family that was all about Phil wanting to try and get 
a new, an iPad and how hard it was for him to get one and what they were doing to try and get it for his birthday. And then eventually they managed it. Spoiler alert, don't care. And um, they brought it in with it, uh, an app that had a birthday cake on it that you could blow out because it did it the microphone. He was like, what is happening? It's amazing. And I thought, I, I can't tell whether that was promoted material. Probably was. But even either way, that showed the level of appetite for something like that from Apple. Yeah, Apple tight. Um, final thing, the iPod. Does anyone miss the iPod? I do. Yeah, I do. I actually miss the iPod. Um, like, I do like using one device uh, for just about everything, but I I loved my iPad, cl- my iPod Classic. Uh, it had room for 10,000 songs, and it was my goal to fill, fill it up. So that was, I, I love the idea of that. But in the grand scheme of having to carry around 511 gadgets, I am not, I don't, I, I want it for nostalgia's st- sake. I would not be carrying it around. The other day I found in a drawer an iPod Nano and I still think that's one of the greatest devices of all time. Just such, yeah, I, I, I had an iPod Classic back in the day with a scroll wheel and everything and that was, that was wonderful. But the Nano, ah, oh, such a well-designed piece of kit. Yeah, everyone agrees? I love it. This is brilliant. <laughs> yeah. It's much easier when everyone just stays quiet and just does what you say. Um, and the only thing I had forgotten about and Daryl, you brought up, the iPod Hi-Fi. Yes. Who, ma- who made that? I can't remember. So it was Apple, and Steve Jobs demoed it, I remember. Was it? With the massive boombox and where you could dock your uh, iPod with video, because it was around the time where they introduced music videos to the iPods, and you could just dock it. Oh, and yeah. then just Yeah, and just have either, you know, <laughs> Girls Aloud if you wanted to, just blasting on the hi-fi. Obviously do. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, j- just just Googled it. Top, st- top answer was Tech Radar. Good one, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> has it got your byline no no this was just uh, three weeks before i joined we reviewed that there you go don't you uh, love when you are uh, when you're talking about something it's like yeah let me look it up who reviewed this oh snap i reviewed it <laughs> <laughs> yeah there was one of my favorite one was a, a chat we used to work with um over on t3 um, in future publishing houses, he used to sit near us, and he was in charge of their features at the time. And he said he was looking for um, best Father's Day gifts to try and buy something for his dad, and he found his own list that didn't help him at all. <laughs> he was like, "These are all rubbish. I can't use this." He's like, "Oh, I've messed this right up." But yeah, he just he, he, he got it wrong for himself. But yeah, the Apple. I mean, you should definitely Google Apple iPod iPod Hi-Fi and have a look. Mm. It is massive, and yeah, it only lasted. A couple of years, I think, but uh, 2006 for you there. Um, right, let's move on to the present day. We've just had WWDC uh, earlier this week. Felt like a gap year. That's what we've said. I, I mean, a lot of incremental changes for software, which, I mean, WWDC is for, but, you know, the hype trade started like, oh, my God, we're going to see new MacBooks. We're going to see them, folks. This is a, I'm like, this is not MacBook season. It's not. It's not, and people are like, no, but it is. L- l- like, uh, reliable leakers have said it is, and look, look, look at us all now, just feeling very anticlimactic. Um, I, I guess, I guess it was a, I guess it was a thing. It's really where we ever get hardware at WWDC, though, isn't it? That was such a like such a strange curveball in that way of like randomly saying that we're going to get MacBooks, and there we like we did see an iPhone, the iPhone SE, at a similar sort of time, didn't we? Like. Similar, similar time to this last year. That wasn't at WWDC. I'm just saying that's a similar sort of time of year. But yeah, it was never really going to happen, was it? It's always going to be developer focused. And it takes away from the whole point of that event. If they start then launching gadgets, it makes more sense to focus on the software. But again, a quiet year, possibly because of COVID. COVID may have had an impact on that, may have mean that as a few things. But a lot of Apple software had a really big year last year. So it probably makes sense that this year is going to be a little bit quieter, mm. especially talking from the standpoint of iOS. I'm not sure if Sh- um, Shuri agrees on in terms of macOS. But um, yeah, it definitely iOS 14 was such a major upgrade. It, made, it makes sense this is going to be a quieter year. I definitely agree. Um, everything, every, every year can't be this wow year as much as we want it to be a wow year. Um, and it, that's fine. It's just that, you know, we, we all sit with bated breath and then it's just, it's just that feeling of, oh, hmm. that's it. Like that you get <laughs> afterwards. Cause you're, you're sitting there with wrapped attention for two, two hours. And you're like, okay, okay, okay. What's next? What's next? What's next? And then it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I could have had a V8. It's, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because you've got. You do, ha- you do have this, the, the, the developer conferences for developers and you can see the tone in it. Like the video is a lot more fun. Craig Figueriki 
it's basically his own little movie star for a, for a whole couple of hours, and, <laughs> and 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 it would be weird to launch hardware. But they they have done a lot over the years. You know, the, the early iPhones were all at WWDC. Um, you know, there was Macs, iMac Pro, the Mac, and the HomePod a few years back. You know, it's not un, unknowable that we have hardware from there. So it doesn't it it wasn't impossible. But for me, I was, we were sort of trying to think about the themes with it this year. It was all about connectivity. You know, connecting with friends and like SharePlay being this thing where you can. And I think SharePlay is interesting. If it, it'd be even more interesting if it was across all platforms. But this idea that you can just send a message to someone and start watching in sync together, have it on the TV if you've got an Apple TV, have it on your iPhone if it's an iPhone, you would be able to do that with Disney Plus and, and Hulu and, and some brands like that. I think that's actually, given how much interest people get for articles we publish on how to watch along, I think that's a pretty big deal. Um, it's just, like I said, it's locked to people who have got iPhones and want to use iMessage rather than WhatsApp, which is big in America, not so much around the world. So it's, it's an interesting one. I think it's weird to be honest because the thing is the last few years I could have told you like the standout feature really from WDC. I mean last year was widgets, the year before was dark mode, the year before that was shortcuts on iPhone but here I mean it just seems like there's a mix of refinements instead. There's all these little breadcrumbs that kind of added up to be a substantial update for each of them. So yeah it's, it's definitely kind of a, a refinement year really just to step back until next year really. Yeah, I mean, universal control I thought was really cool until until you reminded me about Sidecar, where you can place an iPad next to a MacBook next to an iMac and use your map, your keyboard and mouse and just literally push across. Like you, you move it across the screen, it will sort of like struggle into a different dimension on a different device and off it goes. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like these, it's finally wireless connectivity. And then you had said, oh yeah, what about Sidecar where... I was like, oh yeah, that thing where you could turn an iPad into a second screen by just placing it next to it last year yeah. happened. So that's already been a thing. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the thing is with universal control is the fact that you you can only start it from a Mac. You can't start it from an iPad. So to me, that says that's a front and center Mac feature, really. So you're going to be controlling your trackpad and the keyboard from a Mac to use on the iPad. So I think, again, it adds credits to the fact that, you know, if you want to bring some more features, it's the Mac this time. Yeah, and if you, going to the watch as well, like Apple Watch last year got sleep tracking, which is massive. You know, it hasn't turned out to be the biggest feature in terms of use because obviously you can't charge as much. But I assume that meant that the Watch 7 was going to be much longer battery life, et cetera, et cetera. There was loads of conjecture from it. This year, Reflect came along where you could, Apple would tell you how to be happy and you look at some pretty colors and then feel happy for that reason uh, for between one to five minutes. Um, and I'm still really annoyed about that because the watch itself is a really good thing for meditation in terms of, if you use the breathe app, for instance, it will tap your wrist and go da, 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 so you can breathe in and breathe out, which is helpful. But it's got these little visualizations, which are nice to look at, but it just feels weird staring at a little screen on your wrist. Like mm -hmm. it should connect with the iPad or with a Mac or with your iPhone so you can have, because it is really good to have, you know, mindful visuals as well as they are in your breath. That, Don't get uh, me started with Apple Watch and iPad. Apple but... reminds you that it is now your allotted five minutes to be happy. Think happy thoughts. <laughs> this is brought to you by tim cook be <laughs> happy now you said it like that now i feel like oh no <laughs> oh no here's how to here's how to be mindful Ah, oh, oh this is the end isn't it <laughs> we joined this train years ago sorry you, you, you said you said you were saying about the watch daryl now that my existence is futile oh the thing is i mean no matter what people are wishing for for iPad OS 15 or watch, I just want to see Apple Watch widgets on my iPad. You know, I want to see the fitness widgets. I want to see them on my iPad and the battery widget as well. Where are they? I really want to see that, you know, so I don't know why that's there. It seems like an obvious feature that is missing for some reason. And in terms of, we, obviously, you being software and, and downloads writer for Tech Radar, uh, this was a big deal for you, a good blaze of glory to start. I mean, what was the thing that, What's your biggest takeaway from it? What's your biggest thought about iPad OS, iOS, Watch OS, Mac OS, TV OS, other OSs? I, th I mean, it's like I said earlier, man, I think it is like a big refinement year, to be honest. And I mean, really, with the thing with iPad OS, it's, it's, it's definitely like a, a, an enigma, really. Because the thing is, there's so many who have been wanting it to be a pro machine. I've done that in inverted commas there, because people want to have Final Cut Pro or Xcode on the iPad. And I don't feel like that's the right way to go now because I feel like Apple want to set the iPad to be the middle ground between the iPhone and the Mac. If you're expecting to see Final Cut, then 
I'm sorry, that's not going to happen because they want the iPad to be that go between your Mac or Windows PC or iPhone. That's what it is. So I feel like refinement is the key here. It's a massive theme really for this year, but I also feel like with Mac OS, I feel like that's getting ready for the coming Pro Max of M2 or M1X because there are some features that are exclusive to the M1 Max in Monterey. And there is one little nugget I saw where you manipulate the, the globe in maps and it says that it's recommended that you use a 16 gig memory M1 Mac, which makes you think, could that be the minimum for an M2 MacBook Pro? Maybe. That's the question everyone's going to be asking straight away. Definitely. Everyone had the same thought in their head straight away. That's <laughs> going to be for the, the new Max. That's that spinny globe. That needs more RAM. 100%. Um, so final takeaway from that, I thought the weather app that's been redesigned looks well good. Mm. Um, it's, it, it, you know, it, the rain lands on some squares in it. And I feel like from the days of HTC where their weather app was the, the absolute bee's knees, that world is coming back. Very final thought on Apple before we jump to Beevil Trends. Um, is there anything we think Apple needs to make? Uh, more hardware. Where are my AirPods Pro? Where are the Beats that are supposedly rumored? Where are Air, where AirPods is Pro the, have been invented already? Sorry. Just to where you know. is the 14 inch MacBook, the 16 inch MacBook? Uh, where? You know what? I will bring them into existence for, for a hot second. Where are the mini um, LED iPads? Where is all the hardware? That is what I want to know. We've got a mini LED iPad. That happened. That happened two months ago. Did it? See, I don't. iPad iPad Pro twelve point nine inch editions mini LED, but uh, the the eleven inches isn't. Yeah, it didn't touch it. <laughs> and it's right there for the for the main iPad as well when it comes out. Yeah, I mean, where's the car Apple? Where's the glasses? <laughs> you know, there's so many so many questions here. Um, but you know, talking about Craig Federici being uh, an absolute card when it comes to uh, some of these things, there was a very small nod where he said, like, hey, Tim, had a great work session today. Here are some proposed big features for WWDC 2022, including things like dog AirPods and scroll to recharge. Scroll to recharge makes me sadder than anything in the world. Let's move on to Beevil Trends. Right, for those people that haven't heard this very well-named game, it's basically a game of Google Trends, where Google will show you what things are trending at any given point during the day over a period of time, etc., etc., and will give it a score out of 100 compared to other things. What I'll do is give you three players a keyword to start with, with, uh, you will tell me, I'll tell you the popularity of that. And the next one, you'll tell me whether it's more popular or less popular. These results were taken at 5 p.m. on the 8th of June this year. Uh, so the first one is WWDC 2021, and that had a score of 90 out of 100, which means it's very popular. 100 is the most popular, one is the least. So the next one up is iOS 15. Was that more popular or less popular than WWDC 2021? Less. Any guesses on the number? Uh, 88. Daryl, it's all on you now. You should be able to get this number exactly right to within two, please. <laughs> Maybe if I just do my year of birth, so 89. I'm going to go. Uh, no, 66. That's what you were going to say, wasn't it, Pexy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, mate. So sorry. sorry. Oh, you were going to be dead right. Oh, I can't <laughs> believe it. Uh, but yeah, iOS 15 turned up. It was interesting. There was lots of uh, changes within that. And uh, we've had a good nose through on Tech Radar what iPhone 13 bits you can find out from that. So do go and check that out. Uh, the next up is the Google Pixel Fold, which is rumored for launch in 2021. Uh, there's talk about Samsung making the screen for it, et cetera, et cetera. Is the Google Pixel Fold more popular or less popular than iOS 15? Less. Lower. Less. Correct. It's five. Five out of 100. No one... <laughs> No one, wow. no one cares. <laughs> That's mostly because people don't know what to call that phone at the moment. And also, there was a launch of iOS 15 this week. I feel like <laughs> <laughs> the, the cackling laugh is maybe a bit harsh, Cherie. <laughs> nah, I'm still nah, going to okay, cackle. Fine. Google will be okay. Yeah, yeah, they'll probably be all right with you. <laughs> they, they've just started making Google Photos paid for, so that's going to be a bit more money for them, thankfully. Ah. Oh. They were running out. Uh, so the new Halo Infinite campaign artwork is offering us clues to a single-player story. That's Halo Infinite as a keyword. Is Halo Infinite more imp more popular or less popular than Google Pixel Fold? More. Higher. More. Correct. It is 40... Uh, it's not. It's 12. It is 12. So only seven more. Not that much more, but oh, Halo wow. Infinite is only a tiny bit bigger than Google Pixel Fold. Next That'll up... change next week. Yeah. So Loki was launched this week. Um, you can listen to it 
well, you can listen to it two days ago when this podcast goes out live. It's the Wild Buddy you can Cop. Watch it too. You can, yeah, you can watch it. That's also useful. Um, <laughs> it's the Wild Buddy Cop MCU show we didn't know we needed. Is that Loki? Is Loki more popular or less popular than Halo Infinite? More. 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 Can anyone guess the number? Uh, 72. I, mean, I did just say it. It's 41. Because I read out <laughs> the wrong line. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 41. Right. Let's whiz through the next ones. Nintendo Switch Pro. Where is it? Adam Vajestica on the site this week posited that question. It's a big question because we keep being told it's about to pop up anytime soon. OLED screen, much more power, blah, blah, blah. Where is it? We don't know. Nintendo Switch Pro. Is it more popular or less popular than Loki? More. 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 Correct. 54. Only 13 more, though. Right. Next up, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is a next-gen Uncharted by way of Pixar. That's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, is that more important or less important than Nintendo Switch Pro? Pro. Less. Less. I agree. Less. Wrong. Higher. Oh. 68. Oh, oh all right. Wow. All right, Ratchet wow. and Clank. Yeah, there you go. And finally, finally, we're going to E3 2021 soon. Uh, we've got the schedule, the dates, the attendees, and the predictions on Tech Radar. Is E3 2021 more popular or less popular than Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart? More. More. I'll go less. Well done, Daryl. It is less. Eight less. It's 60. What? <laughs> oh. oh. Daryl wi- wins Beeble Trends by being the only one to go against the grain. <laughs> yes. But Pexy, but Pexy gets his bonus points for uh, yeah, getting it, get on 66 spot on. So actually, I knew it was 66. Oh. I know. So good, man. I'm so sorry I yeah. jumped in when you could. I definitely wasn't that. going higher. Right. Okay. Well, that is it for noise cancelling episode 60. Eight this week. Uh, thank you everyone for listening to all of our 68 episodes if you have been so far. Dad, hello, thank you for that. Um, Cherie, you had a good time? I always have a good time. And how can people get in contact with you, should they wish to? Uh, people should get in contact with me and they can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Smith 11 that is M-I-S-S Smith so uh, not four not five not two not one but three S's and of course if you want to know anything about laptops and things I don't believe in like tablets but things I love like headphones and VR and the like you should absolutely go to Laptop Mag and check out my staff's writing they are amazing they are the future and we are coming for next um vaccinations and violence 2021 and as always laptop net laptop then laptop now laptop forever slightly less impact when you get the build up wrong but i felt like still <laughs> the peakiness was there and daryl got the full flavor daryl uh, thanks for coming on have you enjoyed it i've enjoyed it yeah um it's been it's been enlightening <laughs> you sure? <laughs> are you sure you've enjoyed it <laughs> um how can people get in contact with you well if you want to talk to me about the different cheeses you've sliced with the palm pre you can reach me on twitter on daryl baxter and of course the software and download section on tech radar great place to go everyone loves it uh pexy how about you i've had a great time thank you it's been a long time since i've been on so it's been great to be back yeah um i'm at james rwp on twitter come talk to me about i don't know phones or something and the main place to go for all your tech needs is at Tech Radar across all the socials. Please go there. It's very, very nice. Uh, we do put a lot of effort into writing things on there and we'd like to hear from you. Uh, if you want to speak to me directly, I am Superbeev. That's S-U-P-E-R-B-E-A-V because I'm a grown up on Twitter. And please do come to <laughs> Tech Radar and get all the bits and pieces you'd like to read about. There's loads going on at the moment. Absolutely loads. And it's been a fun week to talk about tech. Um, if you do like the Noise Cancelling podcast, please rate us as highly as you'd like. We want to get right up those tech charts on spotify and apple or wherever you do happen to listen to your podcasts that would be lovely please do that we would love you forever thanks dad again for doing so uh we'll speak to you all next week bye everyone bye bye, bye. bye.